Welcome to the Hour of Harvest. It is great to have you with us as we worship the Lord. Sit back and enjoy as we share the good news of the gospel. We invite you to participate along with us as we sing songs of praise, read the Bible, and pray for those in need. The Hour of Harvest prayer team is standing by to take your prayer requests, praise reports, and lead souls to the Lord. You may call us at 606-464-4250 at any time during this program. May this program be a place where you feel accepted, loved, forgiven, and encouraged in the Lord. Hour of Harvest is touching countless souls with the unconditional love of Christ from the Appalachian Mountains to the Bluegrass region, across the nation, and around the world. From our studios in Beattyville, Kentucky, here is your host of the Hour of Harvest, Margaret Drake. Good evening, and welcome back to our service. We've been, uh, we've had to miss a few for this reason and that, mainly because people have been uh, hindered by the flood waters and so forth. But we're here tonight, and we have phone operators, and our our Dottie is back tonight. After being gone for weeks with all of her injuries, she is well and doing, she's looking wonderful. And so she is here tonight. And so if you call tonight, you'll get to hear Dottie. And uh, well, the others are here to help too. But anyway, uh, we have phone operators and we have a special program for you tonight. We really hope that you will pay attention and listen because that it is something that we really need. We have one scripture that we want to share, and that's in Psalms 124, 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We can, that is what we're banking our whole life on tonight, is our hope of being in the Lord. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for those that have gathered in with us for this time of the evening, and we pray that your will be done in this service. We ask you to anoint and to give the wisdom here that is needed. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, tonight we are so happy to have with us a brand new person to the WLJC uh, family. We have hope in, uh, in the, this ministry. Is this? Hope is here. Hope is hope is here. Ministries. Hmm. I can't read big four-letter words, and from Lexington. And um, we have Greg Horn as our speaker, and uh, he's going to just share with us. You know, right now we're living in such a troubled time. So many people are devastated. Uh, we were just just before service time tonight. We heard about this uh, uh, this man that had was overcome with anxiety and troubles and depressions and so forth and he took his own life and that was uh, just in the county next to us and so this is a troublesome time so uh, so Greg is going to uh, be able to share with us some hope and so let's just pray for him as he shares welcome Greg to the service tonight I am honored to be here, Margaret. Uh, you and Don have been providing hope here in Eastern Kentucky and all across the world for 40 years now. I think you told me in October, and I just want to say thank you for being dealers of hope and letting people know there's always hope because of Jesus. Yes. Yes. So what are you going to share with us tonight? Well, uh, it's kind of interesting, the timing uh, when I talked in May uh, with you all about being a guest and you booked me, you said, uh, come in August. And I said, okay. And of course, we did not know that there would be a flood in eastern Kentucky the week before. And because of a flood, I am in ministry today. Uh, I, my story is that I had a $10 million company in the age of 32 in Cynthiana, Kentucky. And then it rained 13 inches in 24 hours, resulting in a flood. And I went from ready to be a multi-million millionaire in my early 30s to being $2 million in debt oh. because I, I did not have flood insurance. And so I feel a lot of the pain, Margaret, that mm -hmm. uh, people are feeling right now all mm -hmm. in eastern Kentucky. Mm. Yes. And uh, so uh, eventually, eventually you had some choices to make, right? 
I did. I did. I tried to reopen the business because I had 100 people dependent on me for a job. Mm. But um, unfortunately, uh, four years later, because of all the flood debt and Walmart, super centers and things, I had to file bankruptcy. And I put my home up for the business disaster loan. So I lost my business and my home. And I went home that night and my wife said she didn't love me anymore and was leaving me for an old boyfriend. And uh, so I lost my business home and marriage in about a 24-hour period. And to be honest, I, I had some suicidal thoughts. I'd lost hope. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's some of the people listening today that maybe that's where you're at right now uh, because oh, of this Jesus. horrific f flood, this devastating flood. Yes. Um, you've lost everything. And I want you to know um, uh, tonight that we hurt because you hurt. Yes. And most I want you to know that Jesus hurts. And I'm so thankful that in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, that says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm yes. thankful that that means that he was with you in the past before the flood, just like he was with me. He was with me during my flood season, and he's mm. been with me in the future 25 years later. And so mm. I don't think it's ironic the timing that Margaret and Don had me on tonight mm -hmm. because uh, I know what it's like to lose hope because of a flood, but I'm here 25 years later to tell you that there is hope because of Jesus. Yes. Now, each one of those things that you mentioned that you went through, uh, there was a lot of emotions that on every level, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I went to the deepest of deeps, uh, brought me to my knees. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes things happen in life, Margaret, and we get down on one knee, but, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're still kind of steady with that other knee. Mm -hmm. But the flood, the bankruptcy, and the unexpected divorce brought me down to both knees. And... You know, to be transparent, I was a little angry at God. Why did the flood happen on my side of the street and not Walmart's? Mm -hmm. And yet I said, God, I've been going to church all my life. Uh, I put money in the plate, and mm -hmm. but I'm going to find out if this is real. And I just started consuming the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, mm -hmm. and I found out that it is real. And I found out in Psalm 28, verse 7, that the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in you, Lord, and I am helped. And so I guess the best way to describe it, Margaret, is it went from uh, a religion for me to mm -hmm. a relationship with Jesus. Oh, okay. There's a big difference, isn't there? Yes, yes, a lot of difference. And, and with each, uh, we're just thinking about the people that are depressed and so ready to give up even tonight. And uh, we want to give them hope, and we can't from the Word. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And one of the things I want to encourage those of you that have lost everything tonight, if you can learn from maybe some of the mistakes and a few of the successes that I had during my flood season back in 1997 is don't try to figure out five years from now. Don't try to figure out five months from now. Don't even try to figure out five days from now. Just try to trust God minute by minute, hour by hour, and day by day. I'm so thankful that Jesus warned us that in this world you will have trouble. Mm -hmm. You will have trials and tribulations. But in me you will have peace mm -hmm. because I have overcome the world. Yes. And I'm thankful for Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It doesn't say I can do some things. It doesn't say I can do most things. It says I can do all things. And I want to encourage you to lean into Jesus today for your strength. Yes. And, uh, but you know, there, there comes a conscious decision that we had to have to make. Uh, just like he had to decide to quit playing church and get real before the Lord. Well, we don't know what it's like with you. Sometimes, sometimes just a lot of bad things happen to a lot of good people, and you have to you have to get a grip. You have to say, "Okay, what's next? How can I overcome this?" And that is so true. Uh, also, I'm pastor of Jackson Christian Church. In addition to Hope is Here Ministries, and I've been up in Jackson. Uh, some of our members have lost everything, and uh, I've wept with them. And uh, you know, the Bible says to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. And uh, I've done both rejoicing in the four years I've been pastor at Jackson Christian Church, but right now is a season of weeping. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I want to encourage you today is just to hold on. 
Mm -hmm. uh, God gave me an acronym about four and a half years ago, and I spelled out the word hope, and the letter H is simply just hold on. Just hold mm -hmm. on. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23 simply says that because of God's great love, we are not consumed. For his mercies are new every morning. Every day, Great yes. is God's faithfulness. Yes. And so I want to just encourage you, just 24 hours at a time, just walk hand in hand with Jesus because his mercies are new every morning and he wants to help you. Mm. Okay, and so for the ones that are, that are uh, really feeling a need to do something now, as as you say, uh, there, a lot of people get uh, they have they get so depressed and so down that uh, suicide comes into their mind, and you say, "Oh, but you know, I can't. I'm a Christian. That can't happen to me." But it can. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the battlefield is in the mind, and yes. you know, Jesus warned us in John ten ten that the enemy comes to steal, steal, and to kill and destroy mm -hmm. and obviously suicide is destroy but i'm so thankful in the very next breath that jesus said but i have come so that you may have life and have it to the full have it abundantly in other words i'm going to help you when it gets to that part where satan has tried to steal and kill and destroy your life jesus said cling on to me and i will help you pull through so I'm encouraging you, in fact, I'm begging you just to hold on because things could change in a 24-hour period. I love the Psalm 30, verse 5. It says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yeah. So hold on. The sun's going to shine again, and there's always hope because of Jesus. But Galatians chapter 6, 9, Sister Margaret's a verse that's helped me a lot when I was going through that season. And there's been other tough seasons since mm -hmm. then in 1997. It says, do not grow weary in doing good for mm -hmm. at the proper time, you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. And I really do believe that one of Satan's greatest tools is discouragement. He loves mm -hmm. to get us discouraged, which leads to suicide. Mm -hmm. And I just want to remind you that there's always hope because of Jesus. And you may think it's never gonna get better or nobody cares. And unfortunately, suicide is the second leading cause of death for ages 10 to 34 in the state of Kentucky. And that's before mm. the flood. So that's why we're talking about it tonight, yes. because we want you to know, we want to get what's done in the darkness brought into the light. And the second thing in my acronym, HOPE, we talked about the letter H, hold on. Mm -hmm. The letter O is open up to at least one other person. Just mm -hmm. one other person. That's good. Because even Jesus, before he went to the cross, remember he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he asked Peter, James, and John to pray with him. And he told him, he said, I need you to be with me and to pray with me. My soul is so overwhelmed with grief, I feel like death right now. Mm. And so, I mean, that's deep grief and pain in his heart. So I want you to know Jesus knows about pain. And yet, even in his most painful time before he went to the cross, he asked for help. And so I got to believe if Jesus asked for help, that I need to ask for help. And so I want to encourage you tonight to open up. Just tell somebody, call somebody. You may say, everybody around me is hurting. And there's a number that you can call here. They've mm -hmm. got people on the prayer yeah. line. Yes. They can call them right now. There's people yes. wanting to yes. pray with people, right? Yes, yes, they do. They pray. They pray with the ones that want it. And then we share the... They share the request, and that then untold numbers of people pray. And so uh, a lot of good old seasoned saints there that have come through a, a many of the emotional and physical and spiritual battle, and they know how to pray. They know to never give up until victory comes. And uh, that is really good. What's a, a, Give us some yeah, more there. That's I love Psalm 32, verse 3. It says, For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away, through my groaning all day long. And I'm so thankful also it tells us in Psalms that sometimes we're so weary and exhausted that we can't even pray, but it says the Spirit knows our groans. The mm -hmm. Holy Spirit does. And I think one of the things as followers of Jesus, we don't take advantage, and I mean that in a positive way. We know we have God the Father, Jesus the Son, but Jesus said, before I leave, I, when I do leave, I'm gonna leave a comforter and a counselor 
the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And friends, right now, I want to encourage you to call on the Holy Spirit yes. to help you, to comfort you. Yes. And just to be honest with God, have an honest conversation mm -hmm. with God. If you're angry right now because you lost everything in the flood, that's okay. That's what I talked about. My, my situation of being a Christian, a follower of Jesus, went from a religion to a personal relationship. And when I was honest with God, lightning didn't strike me down. Mm -hmm. I'm here today to tell you about it. But you mm -hmm. know what? As I continue to trust God, he slowly healed the broken pieces of my heart and put them back together. And I want to encourage you, like, Greg, where do I start? The book of Psalms is a great, great book. Mm -hmm. Just start in Psalm chapter 1 tonight. Just start reading in chapter 1. And I cried myself to sleep that first month every night reading Psalms. Mm -hmm. But I talked to you about that Psalm 28, 7 became one of my life verses earlier tonight. The Lord is my strength and my shield, my yes. heart trusts in you, yes. Lord, and I am helped. And God's word will give you strength and give you hope so you can hold on for one more day. But open up to at least one person. Please call tonight if you're just overwhelmed with grief mm -hmm. and if you have any suicide thoughts and you're, if you're like, I'm gonna cry through the whole conversation, that's okay. Yeah, It's that's okay, okay to cry, right? Yes, yes, because we, everyone, I don't know anyone that hasn't had trauma of some kind in their life and it, sometimes we, Sometimes we try to hide it a little better, but that's that's still there. It, and the only way to really be free is to really open up and be honest. And you know, you for those of you that are with us all the time, you know that I'm all the time encouraging you to be honest with the Lord. Be who you are. You don't have to put on uh, something else to come before the Lord. Just who you are. He made you like you are, and He understands you. That is the one good thing. Okay, you know, everybody's personalities are a little different. What might uh, be a hindrance to some might not even affect someone else. You know, if we're uh, a little on the impatient side, then that's far from the ones that are so laid back that hardly anything ruffles their feathers. But we all have to watch and know what trips us up and what gets us depressed, what makes us fall into this pit of depression. And, and to be able to talk about it is the, the starting. This is so good. Go ahead, what, what more do you well, have here? We talked about the, the letter H, hold on, the letter O, open up to at least one other person. And then the letter P is put yourself in a new environment. Now, for mm -hmm. some of you that may be, unfortunately, like me, you have to change homes. But you know what? Um, God maybe have something even better for you than you had before. And I know so many people that are willing to help. And, you know, one of the things that Satan would love to do is to keep you discouraged. But oh, just try Jesus. to keep moving forward each day just a little bit. Even through the tears, and allow yourself maybe a five-minute period each hour to have a good cry, uh, to even just talk to God about how much you're hurting, even if you're angry, but then go right back. Say, the other 55 minutes, I am going to focus on what I can do to move forward. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask for help. And I really do believe that God is going to provide in some supernatural ways. And he did it for me 25 years ago when I went through the flood, bankruptcy, and divorce. And he wants to do it for you. Mm -hmm but keep your faith and put yourself in a new environment. And I want to say to those of you that are watching, if you've not been affected by the flood, if the Holy Spirit puts somebody on your heart right now, I want to encourage you to call oh, them, Jesus. Yes. to call them and just say, you know what, God Jesus. laid you on my heart mm -hmm. and I want you to know that because you mm -hmm. hurt, I hurt. Mm -hmm. My hero, Wayne Smith, the founding pastor of Southland Christian, wrote me a letter after the flood and we were putting everything back together. And it was a handwritten letter and it simply said, Greg, I hurt because you hurt. And when I read that, I just, the floodgates opened. I hadn't cried through all this, but then the, the tears just started coming. And then the next sentence said, I know right now this doesn't make sense, but Romans 8:28, all things work together for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And I'll be very honest with you. I didn't believe that 25 years mm -hmm. ago. But I looked at God, up to God after I read that verse, said, God, we're going to find out. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you 25 years later, it's true. And I'm so thankful that verse doesn't say some things work together. It doesn't say most things work together. It says 
all things work yeah. together. And I know that you have banked on that and you and Don, mm -hmm. you've, you've had to stand in faith when yes. sometimes you really didn't understand what God was doing. Is that true? Yes, oh, yes, oh, so true. Because uh, sometimes you can't, you can't, well, at any time we cannot see beyond our nose anyway. And so many times we, we had to totally depend on the Lord to uh, to bring the ministry where it is. There were times that there was not enough money to pay the electric bill. And uh, uh, so we'd gotten a cutoff notice. And so as the, the uh, electric company was coming uh, where this building is here on top of the hill, there's mm -hmm. two roads. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two uh, roads entrance to it. And so as the electric uh, company people was coming up one side of the hill to for, that was cutoff day. Then uh, up the other road, here comes someone that we did not know and gave an offering in the exact amount that uh, the electric company had to have. And so, uh, see there the, again, we'd been praying hard. We was wondering why, why was this happening? But just in time and that that removes all doubt as to where your help comes from when it comes like that because you know that god did it there's no way that any any one person could take uh, take credit for that so yes we have to we have to depend on the lord all the time and uh, but it, it is so so good and you know of course these things are hard to go through but after they after we survive a few then we can have compassion on others and you know it, it was compassion that moved jesus to heal the people yes and so you know a kind word a kind deed will melt your heart quicker than harsh uh, uh, reproving words if, the, if someone's really kind to you when you're having a struggle it means so much so much and uh, I received a letter this week from a lady who said she had lost both of her children this year and how her health was not good and what a hard time she was having. Lost both of her children. And, uh, uh, you know, my heart went out to her because I know how it feels to lose a child. Go ahead with your well, hair. And, and I think that's the thing that, you know, you talked about, you know, one of the things for me, when I used to see floods on TV, I really sympathized with people. I did, I mm -hmm. sympathized with them. But now, because of what I went through 25 years ago, I can empathize. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I went up to Jackson four days in the past week to help. And the Lord, we started a fund through Hope Is Here uh, to help try to provide some re resources and, and been able to provide some hope with some people that have lost everything. And the reason I've done that is because I can empathize what it's like to lose everything. And so I want you to know today that uh, don't, don't think that God doesn't know your pain, uh, that you're hurting, and there's so many others that have been affected. Uh, when we talked at Jackson Christian Church, we just opened up to the congregation in the middle of my sermon. I just felt like the Holy Spirit, I just said, share where, where you're at in your heart right now. What are you processing? What are the feelings? And we had everything from people that hadn't lost anything to people that had had lost everything. And one couple shared, and I had no idea, that about 20 years before that, they had lost everything mm. in a fire. Oh. And so they said, we don't know a flood, but we know what it's like to lose everything and have to start all over again. And God provided for us, and so he's going to provide for you. And so I just want to encourage you today that uh, this hurt that right now seems overwhelming, someday just like I'm able to do tonight for you, you're going to be able to do it for somebody else when they go through a flood in their life. Mm -hmm. Did the flood get into the church at Jackson? We were very fortunate. It, it did not. Okay. Very fortunate. It didn't. Now we're talking about uh, Jackson, Bretha County. Uh, uh, where he is the pastor, so any of you up there uh, know what he's talking about, about being up there to help this week. Uh, all right, and so you have someone there at the church to help all the time to, if, when they call or come. 
We've been trying to reach out and help people. We've partnered some with uh, County Line Community Church because uh, they have a larger parking lot and we've partnered, but there was somebody that drove over six hours from Ohio with a trailer full of supplies and uh, they had clean supplies, but fortunately we had had quite a few of those earlier in the week. But one of the things they had that was such a just brought so much joy just for a few minutes through all this devastation was they had eight bikes for kids. Oh. And to see some kids that got their bike replaced because they had lost it in the flood. And just for a moment to see a smile on an eight year old kid, a uh, little boy and then a, a little girl, they had a bike that said, hello kitty, a hello kitty bike. Just for a second, all the pain and disappointment went away. So there has been some really uh, wonderful, joy-filled moments, even amongst all this devastation. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. That, uh, let's talk, uh, uh, oh, there's more calls coming in. Uh, all right. And so this number, uh, I forgot to give your phone number to start with, but uh, so is this the number that people can get in touch yeah, with they've, you? They've got it up there on the screen right okay. now. Uh, the four right. seven eight five nine four seven four five zero zero seven. Uh you might probably leave a voicemail, but uh, we, we will reach out to you. Uh, please do. I also have a 14-minute podcast on my website, hopeisheretoday.org. If you need some encouragement each day, when Hour of Harvest is not on, I would encourage you to listen to that. Uh, just, I think we all just need hope. and. Mm -hmm. Maybe that might bless you with that. But yeah, please reach out to us if we can help you. But also want to encourage you right now, if you're really hurting, you see those prayer line numbers. There are people here that really, really want to pray for you. Uh, we prayed before we came on the air tonight that people that are just struggling to have hope, that they would call and just share their burdens. And 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Cast your burdens upon God because he cares for you. Mm -hmm. And so tonight we want to ask you to cast your burdens upon us and let us carry your burdens and go to the throne of God for you. Because maybe you're just not in a place right now where you can do that. But there are men and women here that they came specifically just tonight to listen and to pray for you. All right, right here's, a, uh, right here's a, one of the calls that you can see what's uh, the kind that's coming in tonight. We know there's a lot, of, a lot of pain, a different kind of pain tonight. But we're talking about giving you hope. You can overcome what you're struggling with right now. Now, I know when, when, when big things like this hit, you feel like uh, the foundation is gone. You have no place to stand. But you do. We go back to the Word. The Word is the only thing that we can ever stand on and trust the Lord. But see that what that call said? That yes, we had somebody called and said, I'm overwhelmed and I'm really struggling. I have chronic back problems. Thank you so much for reaching out and letting us know. And we pray right now that uh, Jesus would just put his big, big arms around you, yes. send his angels to yes. be around you and oh, to comfort Jesus. you and to give you hope yes. and to help relieve that pain in your back, those back problems. Please uh, put a healing touch on, on this listener tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name, to heal this chronic back pain and to bring him hope. Yes. All right. We, uh, we want you to go ahead and call if you, if you need to or if you, uh, like you say, or you're just knowing what this, all those folk are doing. We appreciate all the help that is coming to, to this area to help uh, the people. But you know, even even this, there's a, a measure of blessing there. But then, when it'll come down to a personal uh, reaction or personal feelings, is what's going to determine how we recover, right? Yes, ma'am. You know, one of two things happens in a situation I've found, at least in my experience and from counseling others. I've been in uh, full-time ministry now for 20 years, the last 20 years since God called me into that. And you either become bitter and you go further from God mm -hmm. or you draw closer to God. Mm -hmm. And I know that we have both seen people on both extremes do that. Yes. And my prayer, and I know Margaret and Don's mm -hmm. is, is that you would draw closer to God yes. and that your faith would become real. It won't be your moms, your grandmothers, your aunts. It becomes your 
faith and you become real owning that faith and sometimes you know there's spiritual markers in all our lives mine was march 1st 1997 but maybe this when this flood happened here in late july early august maybe that's going to become your spiritual marker and the faith that you're going to build your hope on but i know a verse that helped me actually was two verses when i was just trying to figure out god where do i go from here was proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 and it simply says Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yes. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God, and He shall make your path straight. So I want to encourage you tonight to just acknowledge God and just say, God, I don't know what's next. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And I just lay this to you at the foot of the cross, Jesus, and know that you're going to make a way when there seems to be no way and let God do what only he can do. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's uh, always folk that have never had any, much to do with the Lord. And so they're kind of apprehensive about calling on him because of well, you think, well, I've not lived for him before. So why should, why should I call on him now? But I want you to know he understands us. He understands how we feel, what makes us feel the way we do. And He loves you, and He will forgive you. He will, accept, he will meet you at your level of faith. And maybe, uh, maybe if you are just now beginning to realize, hey, I've been needing the Lord all, all along. And just now, uh, the opportunity is right here. So I've got to do something. I've got to make a decision. And when you start to living for him, that, was, that will not mean that you're perfect. No. There will be a few mistakes along the way, but a mistake in sin is different. And so if you just keep going for it, if you fall every 10 feet, get up, keep going. Can't give up. We can't give in to depression. You know, is a deep, dark, thing that really can get a hold of you and you just it's like a big wet blanket and it just got you smothered down you can't get you can't get out from under it and that's why that we got to work with our mind and we got to we got to get our mind above that and you know there's a lot of good scriptures about keeping our mind on on the Lord and uh, uh, that uh, peace of God will that passes all understanding shall keep her hearts and our minds through Jesus Christ. But we've got to make an effort to get there. So, so regardless of who you are, what, what the way you've lived or whatever, the Lord knows where you are and who you are. And just, just talk to Him. If you have a good friend, you have no problems talking to Him, do you? No. Uh, you can just open up and talk. So you can to the Lord tonight. And that's what we're wanting to hear is that you have made a decision to trust in the Lord to save you from destruction and from doing something that would be so, so sad. Yeah, I feel real strongly in my spirit right now. Uh, some people are like, you know, I can't write a check. I can't provide any resources, uh, material resources to those that have lost things. But you know what? You'd be amazed what just a simple text could do. Just say, hey, I'm thinking about you. I hurt because you hurt, hurt mm -hmm. and I'm praying for you, and I love you. And put some emojis on their heart, praying hands to yeah. the cross. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've had people do that to me when I've been walking through a deep valley in my life. And I'll tell you what, even though I'm, I'm a man, and uh, there's times I'll go back when I get in a, a dark season, a deep valley in my life, and go back and read one of those texts. Or if you get a voicemail, you know, leave a voicemail, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we all can go back and listen to those. But you can be the hands and feet of Jesus by a simple phone call or a mm -hmm. text to somebody right now. Mm -hmm. And if the Holy Spirit's laying somebody on your heart, yes. I just want to encourage you. Yes. In fact, I want to challenge you to please, mm -hmm. please Jesus. do that because you would be amazed. Uh, right now, there's people that are just hanging on by a thread because of the devastation of this flood here in eastern Kentucky. Yet, you can be the hands and feet of Jesus and provide hope to somebody. Mm -hmm. And I think about Margaret, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, mm -hmm. verse 13. It says, and these three remain, mm -hmm. faith, hope, and love. Yes. But 
her love is the greatest of these. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I know that faith, hope, and love, faith on, and her love are bookends, hope's in the middle. I think it's hard to have your faith and to love others when you don't have hope. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, That's God, right. God's a God of details. I don't think it's an accident that hope's in the middle of that. These th three remain, faith, hope, and love. You can be a hope agent to somebody else, just like we're trying to be tonight, like Margaret and Don are doing with this wonderful prayer line, and like Hope Is Here Ministry is, but you could do that tonight. So please, please reach out to somebody that you know has been really hurt or devastated by this flood. And the awesome thing is, Margaret, we've had a lot of people that reach out tonight for prayer, haven't we? Yes, oh yes, we do, we do each evening, and that's why it's so, so important. But you know, we're wanting you to have this personal experience with the Lord. Now, you know, we've all had kin folks that joined the church and thought they were okay because they'd been told that just because they signed their name on a book. But, uh, you know, I had, uh, I had uh, an aunt that she joined the church. She, she was a good person. She lived, uh, you know, a good moral life. And she uh, had never really heard the plan of salvation. She never really uh, knew that it was a personal relationship with the Lord. And until after our radio station came on and she, would, uh, she heard the gospel the first time. And, you know, she got down by her bed and she prayed and asked the Lord to forgive her after she'd had her. Her confidence was in that name signing in her, the church. Well, when she realized that wasn't going to get her to heaven, she repented and she really got saved. And then she loved that little radio so much that she would unplug it, wrap it up in a towel and stick it under her bed at night to safeguard it so that she, <laughs> anything wouldn't happen to it before she could hear some more good stuff. So anyway, maybe you're like that. Maybe you have put your confidence in something else, but just, our, the word is the only thing that we can actually stand on. And so, you know, people's uh, uh, tradition and stuff, you know, some of it's not too damaging. Some, uh, some is, and we have to sort through there again. But, uh, but anyway, we want to hear of you having a real personal relationship with the Lord. Now, when you, when you meet that person that you fall in love with, you, uh, you have no problem talking and, uh, and uh, you know, just wanting to be with them. And the same is true with the Lord. When you really get to know Him, there's such a deep hunger in there that you just can't get enough. You just want to keep reading the Word. You want to keep praying. and But it will not happen overnight. It happens one step at a time, right? It is. And right now, for some of you watching, I know you're just like, I don't know if I've got enough hope <laughs> for the rest of this year, mm -hmm. but we're just asking you to have enough hope for tonight. Mm-hmm. And then tomorrow morning, as we talked about earlier, Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23 says, God's mercies are new every morning, and great is His faithfulness. And He will meet you tomorrow morning to start the, the new day again. But it's a process. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I know if you're watching tonight, you're like, Man, I want to please God. And this is a chance for you to really lean into your faith. And I know one of the things I learned through going through my flood, bankruptcy, and unexpected divorce was that I realized that people are more important than things. Mm -hmm. And, yes. you know, it's about relationships. And as uh, one of my heroes, Wayne Smith, said one time, you know, I've done a lot of funerals, but I've never done one with a U-Haul behind the hearse. <laughs> oh, we like we liked him. <laughs> we love to listen to him. Yeah, you can't take it with you. You get, you're not so this stuff can be replaced and God's gonna replace mm -hmm. it I believe that with all my heart and you may not know why right now but I promise you that he will he did it in my life and he will do it for you so yeah. just keep your faith keep your eyes on Jesus and know that God's gonna make a way even when there seems to be no way mm -hmm. well like this here called this came just now from Jackson it says it says, need to be debt free. Bills are so much, it's hard to even buy groceries. Mm. Well, the Lord has promised to supply our needs. He didn't say how 
or when, but he's promised to supply our needs. And so uh, just put your all your trust and hope and in the Lord and he will supply your needs. And then you gotta have wisdom on going in debt. You know, being in debt is a really a, a choking thing. It yes, it just, uh, well you had a bigger debt than I've ever thought about, so <laughs> you can tell about that. I've mm -hmm. never had that much. Uh, but anyway, I don't like to go in debt. If you have a credit card, don't, don't max it out. Uh, if you can't pay for it the next month, don't use it. And that way it save you from getting in trouble. Here is a lady that's called and said she's suffering from depression and really needs prayer. All right, that's what we're talking about tonight, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. And one of the things doing is praying God's word, speaking God's word, call in tonight. I'm glad that she did, that she asked her prayer, said, hey, this is where I'm at, but I've mm -hmm. got good news for you. You don't have to stay there. And one of the things that I learned through my flood and bankruptcy and divorce, the very, very painful season in my life, is I leaned into Jesus and read God's word each day. He gave me supernatural strength and he gave me hope. It didn't mean that I didn't cry myself to sleep each night for a couple months, but you know what? Each day I got a little stronger as I leaned into the Lord and he provided hope. And one of the things I had to learn to do was not to trust and just rely on all my feelings. Because unfortunately, the Bible tells us that the heart is deceitful above all else. Yes. And sometimes it can even become wicked. Mm -hmm. And so as my mom used to say to me sometimes when I would kind of start to wallow in my feelings with the flood, bankruptcy, and divorce, she'd say, Greg, it's okay to visit there, but don't set up camp there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want to encourage you, don't set up camp there. Remember, we talked about this earlier, that it's okay to have like a five-minute just five minutes, you know, maybe even in an hour right now if you're so overwhelmed, where you just cry and you talk to God and it's okay to even be angry, but then say, okay, God, I'm gonna trust you to help me put my life back together and make steps to keep moving forward by doing what you can do. Act like it depends on you, but pray like it depends on God. Mm hmm all right. All right, we have an email that came in today from some friends up in New Jersey. Kathy and John and their daughter, uh, Christina, is in the fourth stage of bone cancer and is suffering a lot. And the tumors have broken her back twice and the doctors are doing all they can, but they're wanting us to help them pray for healing and strength. And uh, they thank us for praying for their daughter. So that's Christina with stage four uh, bone cancer. So they are depending on people's compassion and prayers to see them through this. That seeing their daughter in such a shape, you know, that would be such a uh, such a hard thing. There's someone else lost uh, uh, someone, their family, and uh, they have six children. So that's a uh, a lot of a lot of calls coming in from different different needs, but you know I'm glad that the Lord don't just say, well now let's sort through these and let's say now which one's worthy to be uh, ministered to or be given this or that. No, He loves us all alike. Now that might hurt your feelings sometimes. You might think that you're better than somebody, but not in God's eyes. You're not. We're all the same. He loves us all alike. And the good thing about he loves us and he will forgive you when you really ask him to. But you've got to be sorry for your sins now. You can't play church and just make a mockery. But, but when you're truly repentant of your sins, he will forgive you. I don't care what you've done or where you've been because that's just the God that we're talking about. And that's the ones we're trying to get you to get interested in and allow him to help. The greatest help on earth in any way is what we're sharing tonight, and that is the help of the Lord. Amen and amen. And 
you know, so one of the things I know people are saying, okay, I want to trust Jesus, but I have some practical needs. Well, God's going to provide those practical needs. Mm -hmm. I had somebody call me today up in Ohio. It's amazing the generosity of people in Ohio, but said, hey, I've got 110 uh, mattresses and box springs that I want to deliver. Mm. And I said, well, we're going to work on trying to find a place to make that happen. And so God's going to be providing a bed through somebody in Ohio that God laid on their heart and just so appreciate Anthony Mullins and County Line uh, Community Church there in Chavez. It's just been tremendous mm -hmm. with just having distribution to help provide. And uh, I believe that hopefully maybe we can set something up in the future with that. But just like I shared the person that brought bicycles and plates mm -hmm. and uh, cleaning kits. I mean, God is providing clothes, uh, food, gift cards. The Lord is going to be your provider. Lean into him today and know the help is on the way. Mm -hmm. All right. So if, uh, if the folk want to get a hold of you, let's give them your phone number again so that they can uh, get in touch with you. Yes, ma'am. It's 859 859- Four seven four five zero zero seven. We we'll also encourage you uh, to go to our website, hopeisheretoday.org. Hopeisheretoday.org. You can reach me there by email. Um, there's also lots of encouraging podcasts that you can listen to, some unbelievable testimonies of hope from people. And so I hope that you will check that out too. Uh, hopeisheretoday.org. Uh, leave a message. We will get back with you if you want to call and have a phone call. But uh, just know that, I mean, things can just change in an instant. I love Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. It says, unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick but a sudden good break can turn your life around and so i'm just praying for somebody listening tonight or watching tonight that uh, you're going to get a good break tomorrow i don't know what that's going to be but but jesus does and he's going to do something in your life to give you some encouragement and hope to help you just keep pressing forward so please please just hang in there god is going to make a way mm -hmm. All right, that uh, that is so good, and uh, so we have uh, we have all these requests in. So we uh, 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 there's you know a lot of everything when someone has a pacemaker, and uh, well, there's just a lot. So uh, let's just pray for these, and let's just pray for all of the uh, uh, you lead us. Uh, for all of these flood victims and the ones that, the ones that want to make a decision tonight to overcome their uh, depression and their uh, discouragement, you know, I, I had a little track one time that talked about the devil had all of his tools up for sale, and discouragement was priced higher than any of them, and. Uh, Someone said, "Well, how come that was uh, the price was higher? Because he said you could get people depressed when you can't get them to sin, mm. and, and then if you get depressed, you lose heart, you lose faith, you you know become kind of like a, a rag doll. You kind of go either what direction, and so you've got to uh, you've got to not let depression." and uh, things overtake you. Now, don't feel like you're the only ones that ever experienced this because everyone at some time or other when they have, have lost things, family members, or uh, if you've just never come to know the Lord in a, a personal way and never accepted Him as your Savior, there's been a vacancy there in your heart and you've wondered, you've wondered what it was all about. Well. The first thing you know, it would be to pray and to really accept the Lord as your personal Savior and then experience all these other blessings. And then you'll know better how to reach out and, and uh, not let this depression, not let the uh, discouragement and the things. Uh, you know, when you read about the Lord, when you experience Him, there's not anything depressing about Him. More calls coming in. And so we're going to ask uh, Pastor Greg Horn from the Jackson Christian Church is who we have as our guest tonight. And it's Hope is Here Ministry and from 
uh, a Lexington address, and so we want you to get in touch with him. He's out there doing uh, doing a lot for the people, and so we're going to uh, uh, we'll, we'll share these other requests here and see what's uh, what's going on and. Uh, Got a Bible verse I'd like to share, okay. if it's okay, Miss Margaret. Yes, yes. Uh, Romans 15, chapter 15, verse 13 is the verse that is the foundation for Hope is Here ministry. And just as we've been sitting here and I've been looking at these prayer requests that we're about ready to pray for, maybe uh, I believe Romans 15, uh, chapter 15, verse 13 is a word for somebody tonight. And it simply says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And I love in that one verse, of mm -hmm. course, it has hope twice, mm -hmm. but it says that God will fill you with joy and peace. Maybe you need some joy, like, Craig, I definitely need some peace. But the next part of that verse says, as you trust in Him. And right now, I know there's somebody listening. You're just kind of on the border, like, you know, I really want to trust God that he's going to make a way and he, what's just been a horrific situation. God, the Bible talks about in Revelation, that he's going to make all things new someday. But I believe he wants to do some of that here on earth before heaven. And right now, you're in this battle on whether you're going to trust God or not. And Romans 15, chapter 15, verse 13, it's for somebody listening tonight. And I want you to get your Bible out, and I want you to write that down and put it on a post-it note. I want you to stick it on your bathroom mirror. I want you to stick it on your coffee pot, on your refrigerator, and I want you to read it throughout the day to when you have it memorized. And when you get discouraged and when you get depressed, you start reading that verse out loud. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace mm. as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Yes. Yes. More calls here. We, uh, uh, Roy, uh, Roy Moore, he's having trouble with his eyes and breathing. WLGC is his church now that he can't get out. Velma has, says her only son, her only family member, Harold is very sick, and she's also sick. And so, so we're going to, uh, looking at the uh, clock, we better pray for all of them together. And so if you will, uh, uh, just lead us in prayer for all of them. All right. For the ones that did not call, that's too discouraged, and for the family that their member took his own life just this afternoon that we heard about. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can call, come boldly before your throne of the gracious God, as it tells us in Hebrews, and that we will find help in our time of need. And God, I know there's a lot of people watching tonight that, man, they just need some help. They need some grace. They need some hope. And I thank you, God, that because of Jesus, there's always hope. And God, as I've read through these prayer requests, I'm thankful for each person that called in tonight and want them to know that they matter to God. You matter to God. Yes. And we lift up these prayer requests, whether it's somebody that was dealing with cancer. Uh, I saw a prayer request for somebody's father-in-law that's passed away, a son-in-law that's passed away, somebody that's got to have knee surgery, somebody that needs food to eat, somebody that's dealing with depression, somebody that's going through a tough marriage situation, mm -hmm. somebody that has a child that's dealing with addiction. Thank you, Lord, that right now in Jesus' name that you are working these situations. You hear these prayer requests of your son and daughter. And God, I just want to pray that you would move in a way that only you can move and that you'll do what only you can do. Yes. And thank you, God, that First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says we can cast all our cares, all our burdens, all our anxiety upon you because yes. you care. Yes. Thankful that, that you care. And God, I know there's somebody listening now. They just need to know that Jesus loves them. Uh -huh. And friends, that's why we're here tonight. That's why Margaret and Don yes. for almost 40 years each night come on just saying we want you to know that Jesus loves you. And I think about that little song when we were kids, Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible tells me so. Mm -hmm. We are weak, he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. 
So Heavenly Father, thank you that you're here tonight. Thank you that you hear these prayer requests. We cover them with the blood of Jesus and we pray for healing, hope, and love. And it's in his powerful name that we pray. Thank you for being our protector and provider. Thank you for being here tonight. Yes, Thank you that there's always hope because of Jesus. And it's in his powerful and precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Very, very good. All right. Tonight our, our guest has been Pastor Greg Horn from the Jackson Christian Church. And uh, he's located in uh, the Lexington home address. And uh, once again, uh, there's there's your number so that people can get in touch with you and he is very active in trying to help uh, in the flood situation up here so if you if you need his help just call that number and uh, let him know and maybe maybe it's one of those beds uh, that he's talking about someone's going to send down that mm -hmm. that you're needing and uh, so you, you never know how that prayers are being answered uh, you know, as I read the story again about uh, Joseph's brothers, how they were so mean to him and they tried to sell him and kill him and everything. And but, but he said, you know, God was working a plan out. He sent him that down there uh, to save their life. But look what a terrible, painful route he had to take to get there. Mm -hmm. But so we don't know. We don't see the the whole picture. We just we just go day by day. So what else would you like to say? We're about to run out of time here. Well, I'm just so thankful to be here. Uh, my father grew up in Inez, Kentucky. Uh, uh, had a grocery store in Sayersville, Kentucky, and so uh, these are my roots, Eastern Kentucky, and uh, he used to watch this program and love this program, and mm. uh, he didn't accept Jesus till he was 50. But the, late, the last 24 years of his life, he was transformed. And when he died in 2016, he was in the middle of teaching a Bible study on the book of Revelation oh. that he put together. Oh my. So, so I want to thank you and your ministry mm. here, Hour of Harvest, because you sowed seeds into my dad's life. Mm. And he's in heaven because of that. Mm. And for somebody listening now, you may have been praying for somebody a long mm -hmm. time and they've not surrendered their life mm -hmm. to Jesus yet. Don't give up because my no. dad was almost 50 before he did. So thank you mm. so much for this mm. ministry. Thank you for helping my dad find Jesus. And uh, thank you for the honor of being here tonight. God's blessings upon you and Don. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Good. Glad to know heaven has another, another soul there. So... Uh, it looks like we're being warned that the time is about up. up. <laughs> so uh, we, uh, once again, if you want to get in touch with our guests tonight, uh, Pastor Greg Horn from the Jackson, Kentucky uh, Christian Church. This is in Breathitt County now, the church is. So uh, see, there's a Jackson County yes, and sir. there's a, so yes, we have yes, to try to tell which which county we're talking about. And uh, so just be sure there's the number and uh, that you may call and and uh, we will pray for you and, and also he will and he'll do what he can to help you. So uh, we appreciate him coming to help us tonight. Our time has come and gone. So from all of us, we want to say good night and God bless you. Thank you for being a part of the Hour of Harvest. We hope that you are truly blessed and encouraged every time you watch. This program is made possible by your contribution and support. Would you become a financial partner of the Hour of Harvest with a one-time or monthly offering? You can send your pledges of support to the Hour of Harvest, Post Office Box Y, Bayville, Kentucky, 41311, or visit us online at www.hourofharvest.com. May God bless you.